Your team is absolutely critical for the day-to-day -day operations of your farm, and tracking what they're working on and for how long can be just as important for your business goals. Of course, you'll want to know the days and hours they worked to compensate them, but tracking the tasks they worked on and how long each one took can also help you streamline operations and gain efficiencies. FarmBright's timesheet feature lets your employees add their tasks and hours directly through the app where you can review and approve what they submitted. You can run a report to see total hours worked and export the data to a spreadsheet to send to a separate payroll software. Let's take a look. First, I want you to know that the timesheets feature is available to FarmBright Premium subscriptions. If you're not currently on a premium subscription, but you want to use this feature, you can navigate to your settings and choose billing, and then select change plan to update from there. Now, when we're talking about timesheets, the system is somewhat different for employees and managers, with managers having additional administrative features. You'll find separate help articles for each, but in this video, we're going to take a more high level approach and show you the overall workflow for how you might implement this feature on your farm. To get started, we'll navigate to Schedule and choose Timesheets. When you view this page as a manager, you'll immediately see weekly timesheets for all of your employees. But as an employee, you'll only see your own and not all of your coworkers. Admins can create these timesheets each week for all of their employees, or employees can log into the app and create the timesheets themselves. Either way, to get started, you'll click New Timesheet and select a time period ending. These timesheets are weekly and will always end on a Sunday, so this is really choosing the last day of this week's timesheet. We'll choose who this timesheet will be used for from a list of our FarmBright users. We can also set a status, which, if we're just creating a brand new sheet, will likely be left in draft. The draft status means that managers and employees will be able to edit the sheet and add hours, so the timesheet will likely be in that status for the week as it's being worked on and completed. Without skipping too far ahead here, note that employees can submit their hours to their managers to have them reviewed, and then managers can mark the timesheet as rejected or approved to either ask for more information or approve the hours to be sent to payroll. And when the pay period is ended, timesheets might get marked complete to remove them from the default view for your list of timesheets. You'll also have two time-saving features here, one to pre-populate the timesheet with tasks and scheduled events for this employee, and another to copy from the previous week. Pre-populating from the schedule and tasks preloads the timesheets with tasks that the employee was assigned to and automatically loads the amount of hours that they spent on scheduled events. This is a great way to connect FarmBright's schedule and tasks section to the timesheets to simplify and streamline this process. The choice to copy from previous week will take all of the tasks, hours, and days from this employee's last timesheet and copy it into this one. This could be very helpful for employees that work on mostly the same tasks each week. You also have a field to add any additional comments and notes, and then we'll create the timesheet. We'll see tasks and events preloaded into the sheet, with the hours assigned to the event preloaded as well. At this point, the farm employee might add their hours throughout the week. It's up to you as a business how you'd like to administrate this. Employees can log into the FarmBright app on their mobile device and add their hours there, or you might have a shared computer in your farm office where they can log in and add their hours. Let's switch to the employee view and add some hours. We've retained the eight hours from working the farm stand shift on Saturday and added six hours a day for Monday through Thursday, distributed amongst the different tasks that this employee worked over the different days. Additional rows and tasks can be added. We'll account for two additional hours of miscellaneous work on each one of those days. Be aware that the amount of detail that you track here is entirely up to you. There has to be at least one task on the sheet to record the hours worked, but tracking more than that and being specific can help you see where labor hours are going and perhaps help you find some efficiencies. Also, know that there is no minimum or maximum for any day or task, so this could work great for a part-time employee who just works a shift on the weekend or for a full-time employee working 40 hours a week or more. After adding hours, you can click Update Timesheet to save. And once all hours are added to the timesheet and it's completed to the employee's satisfaction, they'll click Submit for Approval, which marks the timesheet status as submitted and prevents the employee from making any further changes. Going back to the manager's view, we'll see that same status reflected in the timesheet. It looks like some of our other employees have submitted theirs as well, 
and we have one that we're still waiting on. If you have a scheduling and payroll process that requires your employees to submit their hours to you by a certain day and time each week, you might communicate that with your employees and then lock the timesheets at that time to prevent any further updates. You can easily do this in bulk. We can select all of the sheets, choose bulk actions, and then lock. You'll see a lock icon displayed for each one of these. This lock status applies to employees, preventing them from making further changes to the timesheets, but admins and managers are still able to review and make changes if they need. Locking the timesheets is not required though. If this isn't part of your process, you don't have to worry about it. And before we review the timesheet that we worked with earlier, let's quickly take a look at some of the filters that managers and admins can apply to this page. You can filter for the dates of the sheets, their status, or find sheets for a particular employee. After you've found what you need, you can also clear them, where you'll see all your timesheets in any status. Now let's take a look at the timesheet we submitted earlier and see that as a manager, we have options to approve or reject the timesheet. You can review the days, hours, and time spent on each task, and if you're satisfied with the timesheet, you can mark it as approved. Alternatively, if there are any issues, you can reject the timesheet, where you'll be able to supply a reason for the rejection, and then send it back for an update. Whether you approve or reject, Farmbright will bring you to the next submitted timesheet after saving so that you can review the next one. You can also use these menus in the upper left to select a date range or a particular employee. Now that we've rejected this timesheet, you'll see that it's marked as Needs Update with the reason we supplied here. Farmbright automatically generates a notification email to the employee letting them know that their timesheet needs attention and the timesheet is automatically unlocked so that they can log in and update it. After they do that, it'll be shown again as submitted, where you can then re-review and approve. Let's go back to the main list of timesheets and see that you'll also have an option to bulk approve timesheets, where you can select the timesheets to approve and then use the bulk actions to mark them with that status. And now that they're approved, if you'd like to see totals for the week, you'll have two choices. First, you can navigate to the Actions button and choose Export CSV or Download All Records. Export CSV will get you a spreadsheet of just the records we see on the screen, whereas Download All Records will create a spreadsheet of all of the timesheets for all dates and all employees that exist in Farmbright. Let's download the ones we're looking at, and we'll see all of the data exported into the spreadsheet. You'll see lots of data here, including the total hours and employee name, but other things like who approved the sheet, reasons for rejection, when it was approved, and the time period it was for. You might send this sheet to a payroll vendor outside of the system, but if there are too many details on here, and you'd rather just see total hours within a given date range, we'll go back to Farmbright and navigate to Reports, Standard Reports, choose User Activities, and we'll find the Employee Approved Hours Report here. If you run your payroll bi-weekly, this report will give you the total approved hours within the past two weeks by default. There's less information on this report about the individual timesheets. This is more useful to see the total hours across multiple timesheets. You can also download it as well to get a CSV to send to your payroll vendor. And now that you have the total hours for that time period, let's go back to Schedule and Timesheets and see that you can optionally mark your timesheets as complete. Completed timesheets are not shown by default on the timesheets homepage, so this is a great way to keep them for historical reference, but not have to look at them every time you review the sheets. If you did want to view them though, you can easily set a filter to show complete, where we'll then see them displayed. All right, that takes us through this getting started guide for timesheets. Reach out to us if you have any questions about using this feature.